Hello friends, welcome to Science With Me. My name is Dr. Erica with Rosie Research and today we are going to put our Harry Potter sorting hat on a breadboard. We're gonna use our Arduino shield that came in our Elegoo kit. And just like all the stuff that we've been programming with, all of our programs are working out of that very basic intro Elegoo Uno starter kit. You can always support us at patreon.com slash Rosie Research, which gets you all of these code downloads and also lots of office hours and online help. So let's get started. We need a red, green, yellow, and blue LED. You're gonna need one of your push buttons from your kit, some jumpers. I have a red, green, yellow, blue, and I have black and a white and an orange jumper for this. Um, I've got some of my smaller jumpers up here that I will use, but you can use these. Colors don't really matter, they keep you organized. We've got our Elegoo Uno and our shield. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing that we are gonna do is we are gonna put our LEDs in and you wanna make sure that you look at your long leg and your short leg. Your short leg we're always gonna keep sort of towards the left of our work and you can cut these legs later if you'd like to, if you'd like things to be a little bit shorter, if you don't like the look of that. Um, and that's totally fine. So here's my long leg that's gonna go to this side of the board today so I'm gonna make sure I double check that for each and every one of these LEDs as we put them in. I'm gonna put them in in the same color order as I have on my video. So again, check that short leg of your LED. Make sure, skip one. You notice that I'm going across on the row. I'm not going up and down in the columns. That's because the rows, the boxes are not connected in those rows. There's the short leg. All right, so there are my LEDs into the shield. And now we are going to go from ground through a resistor into a different hole. So here I've got a small little 10 ohm resistor, or actually I think it's a 100 ohm resistor. Not super big, and you don't need it to be big, it's just gonna protect these little LEDs. We're gonna go from ground into another one of these holes. So I'm going to put it right down here. Now this whole column right here is now connected to ground and I can use that to connect my short legs. And because I always had my short legs on the same side, I know that it's always going to be the leftmost part of the row for that LED. All right. So now let's wire up our LEDs into our shield. So here are my digital pins down on this spot. I go from zero to seven and then there's a slight gap and then I go from eight to 13 plus a ground and a reference. So I'm going to take my red jumper cable. I'm going to plug it into the long leg, which is the right side of it. And I'm going to go from the long leg and I'm going to plug that into pin three. Make sure that you start at pin zero. So zero, one, two, three, it looks like it's the fourth pin in. That's pretty important. I'll take my yellow wire. I'm gonna go into the long leg, which is this right-hand side leg that goes on to that little LED. So you can see I have two legs. This is my short leg, because it's on the left side. Here is my long leg on the right side. So I will plug that in, and it goes right next to pin three on pin four. I'm gonna take my green one and do the same thing. I've got, here is my right hand leg, which is my long leg. All right, and we are gonna plug that one into pin five. And then our last one will be our blue one, which goes, here's the short leg, the long leg. Make sure you plug into that long leg and that goes into pin six. All right, so we have our LEDs wired into that breadboard now. And now we need to connect all of our short legs into this ground right here. And I'm gonna use, you can use a bunch of jumpers to do that. Um, I'm gonna use some of these smaller little guys to help me do that in sort of a clean way. So I'm gonna grab these out and let's see if I have anything that will work to just go over a tiny bit. I think these grays might work for me. Pull some out. So I'm gonna go from short leg to short leg. Ooh, that's slightly too long. Let's see, we can't get it in there. There we go, from short leg to short leg. And I'm gonna continue that process of short leg to short leg all the way down the line. 
Go from the yellow's short leg to the green's short leg. Push those little wires in there. And then from the green's short leg to the short leg on the blue. Like that. There we go. And then of course I need to connect the short legs into that ground wire. And I think I can do that with a little tiny blue one. My ground wire is coming from that resistor right into this row and then it's gonna go into the red short leg. The red short leg and the yellow are connected. The yellow short leg and the green short leg are connected. And the green short leg and the blue short leg are connected right there. We have these guys all connected and those are ready to go. All right, now it is time to add our button in. We have a lot of wires over here and our button is just gonna barely fit right across this gap right over here. So your gap is this piece right here and that means the top columns are not connected to the bottom columns. This little push button can only go in sort of one way. If you try to rotate it by 90 degrees, it doesn't cross that gap. It won't make it across. So that just means you need to rotate it so it's a little bit wider and it can cross that gap. And you wanna gently push it on in and it will be at the very, very end. And then we need to wire one of these into the ground, which we can use pulling off that blue short leg and then one of them into five volts, which will be over here. So let's take our blue short leg and connect that into the first pin of our button. There we go, so that goes into this pin. The buttons have pins on two sides. There's this set of pins that are connected, and then there's this set of pins that are connected. So we just connected this one into the ground through that blue short leg, and now we wanna connect this one into five volts, which is right over here, and we can do that with the use of a jumper. So I'm gonna plug in here, and I'll go under and into my five volt column, just like that. So you have these five volts, there's five of them that are right there, and then these five are the grounds, that's where our resistor is coming out of. And last but not least, we also need to connect our button into our Arduino, because right now it's not gonna know when that button is pressed. And the way that we do that is we're gonna take it off of the same side that has the ground piece going into it, and you can pull it on the other side if you would like to. So these two are one button, one dot away. So here's where we went high, and this one that's white is where the ground was, and that's what we were gonna plug into our Arduino. We're gonna plug it in, it should be the last dot that you have on that spot before the gap, and that's pin number seven. So now we are all wired up. We can put this on our board like this. You wanna always make sure that the back pieces line up, the very, very back pins right here. So T, um, RX0 and A5, and then you can gently push them in. And now we are ready to program our little game. All right, so here we are over in our Arduino ID. I've got my connector over here. It's connected into my computer. And you can get our code at patreon.com slash rosyresearch or you can check out our Tinkercad circuits tutorial where I'll show you how to make that. So in our Arduino IDE, we are going to delete all the code that's there and we are gonna paste in our code for the Harry Potter sorting hat. And then you can upload that onto your board. Oh, for some reason, oh, you know what? I think I need to plug this into the other side of my computer. So let me plug that in real fast and we will upload this. There we go. And now when I plug it back in for some power, you'll notice nothing is happening. And then we can press our button because remember we didn't want anything to happen until we pressed our button. We get our initial light show and then it puts me in blue. And each time it's gonna be a random spot where it puts me. Um, but that's sort of a fun little sorting hat that you can make. Give it to your friends, see what house they would be in. Um, and have a lot of fun. Ooh, I'm wondering if one of our LEDs is backwards. If you find that nothing goes on at the very end, that might be an LED that is backwards or an LED that is out. And I'm gonna double check that. 
Oh, that looks good. Hmm. So that would be some troubleshooting just to check those. And also maybe with a CR2032 battery, you can check and make sure that all of the lights are going on, although all of them are going on right here. So that sort of tells us that that is, that's good. That's what we want. All right, beautiful job, my friends. I hope that you enjoyed this breadboard circuits tutorial and we hope that we'll see you in our other ones. Have a great one. <laughs>